Hey everybody, welcome to day three. I'm super excited, I hope that you are. Today we're gonna just go ahead and dive right in because today is going to start the meat and potatoes of this course. So up until now, we've talked about being excited about your business, that is a must. Um, and we've also um, created a frank list or a list of 100 so that you have people that you can pull from um, to be able to ask about things whenever you need things in your business, as well as a group of people that you are going to start building relationships with so that you can potentially start to introduce Sensi to those people. Today, we are going to talk about the number one most income producing thing that you can do for your business. There's nothing else that's more income producing than what we're going to talk about the next two days. It's so important that I'm breaking it up into a two day thing, okay? So we're gonna talk about parties today. Um, I know that sometimes people hear the word party and they're just like, oh gosh, here we go. I can't get parties. Well, hopefully we're going to change that with this course, um, but you do have to be willing to do the work. You do have to have tough skin and be willing to hear the word no. You do have to get out of your feelings and be willing to just put yourself out there and whatever happens, happens. Um, you, you just got to get your emotions and your fears. You got to put all of that aside to be able to book these parties. It's very important. It's the number one most income producing thing that you can do for your business. And if you're not willing to party, then your PRV is not going to grow. You're gonna have a hard time getting to certified and you're gonna have a hard time networking and expanding your customer base. You have to party. This business was based upon a party module. The whole the whole system of Scentsy is based upon people partying. Um, and so you can't be successful without doing it, okay? It just is what it is. That's, that's it in black and white. I'm trying to be real and raw with you guys. If you are not willing to party and if you are not willing to go hard and get the parties that you need, your business is not going to be successful, okay? So we're going to talk about it for two days. Today, we're just going to talk about why we need to party, and we're going to talk about the different party styles. Tomorrow, I'm actually going to show you some party setups. I'm going to show you kind of what an in-house party would look like. I'm going to show you kind of what a bag party would look like. I'm going to show you um, some, you know, some different things. I'm going to show you... Um, some things that I do to book. So it'll be more hands-on tomorrow. I'll be up moving around and I'll be showing you some things and some ideas. But today I just want to plant the seed of partying in your head. We're going to talk a little bit about what it is and the different types of parties that you can do. And then we're going to um and then we're going to talk about um some things that you can do to help book parties, okay? And then to, like I said, tomorrow will be a little more interactive. I'll show you some um some actual party setups and stuff, okay? All right. So Partying. Partying is um, your opportunity to get people excited about your business, to invite them into your world, into your sexy world, as well as give them an opportunity to score some free and half price stuff. Who does not love free goodies? Everybody does. <laughs> I like free things. You like free things. Your customers are going to like free things. Your potential customers are going to like free things. Everybody likes free things. So that is part of the incentive of getting people to party. Parties help you in multiple ways, okay? Number one is the obvious. It gets you PRV, PRV that you need, okay? So that's one of the main reasons why you want to be doing it. It's because it's going to get you the PRV that you need, and it's going to get you closer and closer to certified. Or if you're here just to grow your PRV, the parties is what's going to grow your PRV, okay? So that's the number one reason we need to be doing it. The second reason is because parties connect you to a different group of people. So you remember that Frank list that we made yesterday? So if you pick one person on that list and they decide that they're going to host a party for you, that connects you to everybody they know, to everybody they know, to everybody that they invite to their event. So if that party has 10 people in it, you have grew your customer base, potential customer base, from that one party host to now 10 more people added to your customer base. You see what I'm saying? So that's why it's so important. Parties not only give you PRV, but they network and connect you to a different group of people which you need. And that is how your business continues to, to grow. It's a ripple effect. Every time you party, you get a different set of people that you get to expose to your world. Okay, and so these are potential customers. And so the more you party, the more people you're going to be exposed to, the higher that PRV is going to get. Does that make sense? So that's why it's so important to party. Um, parties also, of course, give your, your host the opportunity to get some free and high price stuff. Um, and if you host your own parties, it gives you the opportunity to get your uh, your own free and half, um, half price stuff. 
but it also gives you more people to ask to party. You see what I'm saying? So now you got your PRV that's going to go up. Now you got a different group of people that you can network to and market to. And you got a whole other group of people that you can act to have parties. So the whole goal, one of the goals of, of a party is to book parties from the party, <laughs> you know? So if I'm hosting a party, you want to try to book more parties from the party that I had from my people that I invited to that party. So, you know, you got three benefits right there. PRV, more people in your network, and the opportunity to book more parties from parties. And if you're team building, if you're trying to build a team, then you have more people that you can ask about joining that you can present the opportunity to, okay? So there's multiple reasons why parties um, benefit and help your business, okay? And it's the number one. There's nothing else on the planet that's more income producing than parties, okay? So once we master parties and booking parties, then everything else will kind of fall into place. But we got to get the party concept down pat, okay? So I want you to work really hard. Um, on parties the next couple of days because we're going to be talking about it, like I said, for at least two days, maybe even three. It's that important. So um, I want you to work really hard the next couple of days on this concept because until we master parties, it's going to be really hard to grow your PRV. Okay. All right. One of the biggest drawbacks people have for parties is that they, they say they can't get parties. Okay. I understand that. I have months where it's harder to get parties. Um, I don't typically have a month where I can't get any at all because I'll throw my own party before I let that happen. And you can do that as well. Um, but some months, it, it, sometimes it is a little harder to get parties. But that's the reason why I had you to create that frank list so that you have more people to be engaging with and building relationships with. So then you have more people to talk to about parties. Okay. So that's one of the drawbacks. So. If you can't get parties, I want you to take a moment to really be honest with yourself about it, okay? So, number one, how often are you talking about it? Are you only talking about it once a month, every once in a while, when it comes up? How often are you talking about parties, okay? If you're not talking about parties at least once or twice a week, you're not talking about it enough, okay? People will get excited about things that they hear repeatedly. Everything about this business has to be consistent. You have to be talking about everything, every portion of this business consistently. So if you're only talking about parties at the first of the month when you need them, that's why you're not getting any. You have to be talking about it more often than that, okay? So think about how many times you're talking about it. And if you need to make a change in how often you talk about it, start there. Talk about it more. Talk about parties more. How often are you sharing the perks, the perks of partying? How often are you talking about it? Do you even do it? Do you share the perks of partying? Do people know that they can earn free and half price things? Do they know um, the things that you get free and half price? When you, as a consultant, you can host your own parties. When you close out those parties, you need to show your customers what you're getting free and half price. And when it comes in, you need to talk about it again, okay? So show the perks, let people know, post, post things if you're using social media a lot. Then share on social media the benefits of parties. If people don't know what the benefit to them is, they're not going to do it. And remember, when you're trying to book parties, always, and even this is, then this even applies to if you are trying to get team members. Never put the focus on yourself, okay? If I need parties, I'm going to be talking about the benefits to the host, okay? I'm not going to talk about what it does for me because that's not important and your customers don't care about what it does for you. What they care about is what's in it for them. So you always want to be highlighting how that how partying benefits them, okay? So share the perks. Make sure you're sharing it consistently. Every time you close out a party, you need to be sharing what you got free and half price every time and when it comes in you need to be sharing sharing it when it comes in and when you do get parties share what your host is getting free and half price and when you book a party say that you booked a party so what i do on my vip page is when somebody books a party with me i'll say hey yay um thank you such and such for booking a party with me we're gonna have so much fun yada 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 i say that and then the day before their party starts i'll post it again and i'll say Hey, you know, whoever it was, Jessica, uh, I'm so excited your CC event uh, begins tomorrow. I'm going to be sending you some information here shortly. I can't wait to party. I make it sound fun and I make it sound exciting. But more importantly, every time something about a party comes up, I'm sharing it on my social media. I'm sharing it with my VIPs. I'm in my stories somewhere. I'm putting, I'm putting, um, 
who's booked a party. I'm, I'm, I'm telling the benefits of it. I'm telling what they got free and half price. If I, if that stuff is coming to me and I'm packaging it up, I'm showing the extra stuff that I'm putting in there, but I'm making it a big deal. Okay. So if you're not doing that, that's probably one of the reasons why, um, it's not sounding attractive to your customers. You're not talking about it enough and you're not making it sound fun and exciting and you're not showing the benefits. So make sure that you're doing that. Um, Another thing is, think about if you're offering incentives. So, of course, they get the free and half price stuff if they host. But with my customers, I always give them a gift from me for booking. Now, you do have to be careful what you say publicly on Facebook to stay compliant. You cannot say that you're giving away anything free um, on, fa on social media. You cannot do that. You have to say it through one-to-one -one communication, through an email, through a text message. You can tell that person face-to-face. Uh, messenger however just not on social media you have to it has to be one-on-one -on -one communication um in which you and that host is the only people that can see it okay that's how you that's how you do it but i always over every month i have some kind of booking incentive so for the month of january i bought the um bring back my bars kit that has the 25 bring back my bars in it and i took those bars and i offered my party host one cube of every single one of those bars so they got 25 free cubes of wax for me from me for hosting an event, okay? My people know that because I put it in an email. I send out emails um, at the beginning of the month. It was in my email. Um, and then also, I posted a little picture of me and says uh, on my VIP page and said, hey, I got a great hosting center for the month of uh, January. Who wants to know what it is? And then when people commented, then I private messaged them and told them, hey, if you book a party with me, I'm going to give you 25 free cubes of wax from bring back my bars, okay? So that's how you do it. You just can't say, hey, I'm giving this away free in public, but you can you can hint around to it and then, have, and then message them with whatever your incentive is. But I always have some kind of incentive um for christmas i think it was december i did little scratch off cards and up underneath each scratch off card if they booked a party with me they got a free mini warmer now i always use my host rewards to do that i do not eat the cost of any kind of booking incentive i use my host rewards so i get it free so i didn't pay anything for it um but it's worth it for me because i'm getting this prv from this host sorry about that from this host so you can do it that way as well um sometimes i will give them you know a free six pack of wax just whatever it is now typically what i do for an incentive is i kind of sometimes i'll do it based on that customer if that customer is already buying wax and warmers i don't offer them wax and warmers i will offer them something else that i want to get them turned on to for example if i have a customer that only buys wax then i might offer them a mini fan so they can try the pods or I might offer them um, a cleaning product so they can try the cleaning products. So I, I'm very strategic about that. I'll, I never offer a host something they're already using. Why would you do that? You want them to be using all the CC uh, products that we offer. So you want to offer them something different so they can try it. Okay? So think about that. But if you're not incentivizing your parties, then that might be an idea. Again, just be careful what you advertise publicly. Don't, don't indicate that you're giving anything free. Um, you, if you're going to do that, then you need to do it through an email or private message or whatever. But, um, putting an incentive in place definitely helps people want to, want to party. Okay. Um, do you include anything in your signage? Do you have signage, um, about partying? So everything that leaves my house, there are a couple of things that automatically go in it. Um, I put information about partying with me. I put information about Scentsy Club and I put information about joining in every single thing that leaves my house. Packaged orders, mail outs, whatever it is, those three things are always in it every time. I don't care if that customer gets it six times. That's six times that they're seeing that same information. Eventually, it's going to sink in that, hey, I might need to book me a party. Or, hey, I might need to join Scentsy Club because I'm always hearing about this. Or, hey, you know what? I need to make money off my own purchases. I need to join her team. I don't care. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like every single time something leaves my house, those three things are in it. So if you're not doing that, that's another reason why you might be having a hard time getting parties because your people are not hearing it enough. So when you package order, put something in there about booking a party. When you send out mail outs, put something in there about booking a party. When you send out emails, put something in there about booking a party. At least once a week, if you don't have the amount of parties that you want for the month, 
Put, put something in your um, social media about partying. But the more you, you talk about it, the more people are um, going to get inquisitive about it and definitely, you know, be sharing the perks and stuff. So create some signage. Um, if you're a part of any of the Cincy Facebook, group, Facebook groups, there are lots of signage that's already available to you. Um, and then you can make your own on like Canva or something like that. But make sure you have some signage about partying. Always have it. Always have it and put it in everything, okay? Um, and then when you do your follow-ups, follow-ups is a whole nother training. We're going to talk about follow-ups, but when you follow up with your customers, you need to be asking them about parties. Okay. So if I had a customer that ordered a six pack of wax for me, say a week ago, cause I usually, I usually give them a couple days after I think they've gotten their order before I touch base with them. So if they got a six pack of wax, I'm going to text them and say, Hey, saw where your wax had been delivered. How, what are you thinking? Do you like it? And you know, I'll wait on them to respond and I'll, and then they might say, yeah, I love this one, this one, this one, this one. And then I'll, then the first, the next thing that comes out of my mouth is, Oh, that's great. Well, how about I get you some free packs of wax next month? Okay. And that's all I say. You don't have to give a bunch of information about parties right off the bat because that turns people off, okay? The le less is more in this situation. That's all you have to say is, hey, how about let's get you some free next, some free wax next month. And then when they ask, oh, well, how, how do I do that? Then you give them the information about a party, okay? But every time I follow up with people, I say that, you know? So if, I'm, if I had a customer that bought a diffuser... And I follow up with them. I'll say, hey, you know, I saw that your diffuser was delivered. How are you liking it? And they might say, oh, I love it. And I love this oil. It's so good. And I'll say, oh, well, how about let's get you some more oils. Let's get you some free. And then if they respond to that, then I'll say, um, okay, then I'll explain, you know, about the party and everything. So every time you follow up, you need to be having um, party conversations, okay? Um, party conversations need to be part of your follow-ups, okay? Um, so that is another way to kind of start breaking the ice about, about parties. Now, here's the thing. You do have to have tough skin, y'all, because you're going to get told no. And at times, when you ask about parties, you might not get a response at all. You can't take that personally. You cannot take that personally because they're not saying no to you because they don't like you. They're just saying no to the opportunity. And I'll tell you another thing that really works well is if you don't say the word party. People are very intimidated by the word party. It just, it just, I don't know, it just scares them to death when you ask them to host a party. So I don't even say that anymore. I always say, "Do you want do you want some free and half price?" Uh, I'll I'll say something like, "Do you want some free scentsy?" That's enough because then if they ask you, "Well, how do I do that?" Then you can give them the the spiel about how parties work and stuff like that. But the e the less is more, and the easier it is, the easier that conversation is with your customer, the more likely they are to respond. Okay, so just ask them, "Hey, do you want some free scentsy?" That's enough. <laughs> That's enough. That's all you gotta say. Just don't go into a big spiel about it right off the bat because, number one, they won't read it. But then, number two, they, they're going to shut down if you give them too much information at one time. Okay? Um, so, yeah. So, make sure that you're including um, opportunities to book parties when you're doing your follow-ups. The effort that you put into booking parties is the effort you're going to get out of it. So if you're barely doing it, then you're barely going to get results. But if you're going hard and you're determined that you are going to book parties that month and you're not going to stop until you book parties that month, then that's the effort that you're going to get. You're going to, you're going to book those parties and they're going to be good parties because you were determined and you put your all into it and you didn't stop just because 20 people told you no. 20 people might tell you no. But you might have one that tells you, yeah, and it might be a $500 party, okay? So don't get discouraged by no's. Don't get discouraged when people ghost you because it's going to happen. But you keep going and you be determined and you keep sharing and you keep making it sound attractive and you keep doing all the things and and have it, have a goal set in mind. So what I do when I plan my month out, every month I plan my month out. We're going to talk a little bit about that later too. But every month I have a plan. I have a plan on how, what my PRV is going to be that month. How am I going to get that PRV? And then how many, um, how many people that I want to recruit that month? Every single month, I have a goal of what I want to do. So my goal is always 2,000 more, 2,000 PRV or more in sales. Um, that's always my goal. I'm usually way above that, but that's a minimum for me. I never want to have a month where I'm less than 2,000 PRV. Okay. I know in order to get that, I have to have a certain amount of parties. So I, Plan my month by saying that I need to have at least six to eight parties every single month. 
every single month. That's the only way you get that kind of PRV. You don't just get it by not partying, okay? You got to party to get that kind of um, PRV, okay? And I know that I need to have at least six to eight parties to be able to get anywhere close to that number in PRV. So I keep going until I get the number of parties I, I um. I need, I keep asking, I keep asking, I keep asking. I start with my follow-ups. And then um, if I can't get them from the follow-ups, then I go to my list. I go to my list, uh, my Frank list. And I start with the people I already have a relationship with and they already know about Cincy. For example, I might go to my family and my friends because most of them know about Cincy, okay? So I'm not going to spam people that are not associated yet with me and CNC. I'm going to talk to the people that I already know that I'm a consultant, that are already so familiar with CNC. I'm going to go to my list, and I'm going to go down my list and start asking people to party with me, okay? But I'm determined every single month to book the number of parties I need, and you have to have that kind of attitude. When you are trying to be successful and you are trying to grow your PRV, you have to be very intentional um, about what you do. You can't wear your feelings on your shoulders. You can't be offended if somebody tells you no, and you cannot give up when somebody tells you no. You have to keep going until you get the results that you want, okay? All right. The last thing we're going to talk about for tonight, and I'm going to go into detail about this tomorrow. I am breaking this up because the parties is... is um, it's so important that I want to give you a lot of information, but I don't want to overwhelm you and give you too much at one time. So I'm going to break it up to, um, and we're going to talk about it again tomorrow. But um, I do want to tell you the types of party styles that you can choose from. And just remember, you don't have to do them all, but you do need to be open minded and understand that not everybody is comfortable with the same type of party style. Um, so I will say that. But I also will say, don't offer somebody a party style that you know that you can't do. For example, if you are not good at going live, then honestly, you don't need to be doing Facebook parties. I, I mean, I hate to say that, and I'm not trying to be mean about it. I know a lot of people that try to do Facebook parties, and they just want to post pictures in that party. And those parties don't do very well. You got to be getting in front of that camera if you're going to do virtual parties, okay? Because you are what bring those products to life. Seeing your face, seeing the video of you using the products, that's what brings those products to life. So if you're not going to do that, then I probably wouldn't use virtual parties as a party party style for, for you. I would choose another party style, okay? Um, you can if you want to. I'm just giving you my suggestion. I just know that those type parties where it's just pictures and flyers, they're super boring. I mean, think about it for yourself. Would you want to attend a party where you never saw the consultant, you never saw the host, and all you saw was a bunch of pictures? Would you want to attend that party? Mm -mm, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't even go. I wouldn't even go to that party. <laughs> I'm just being being real. So you got to put yourself in other people's shoes. You have to put yourself in that host shoes, and you have to put yourself in that get in those guest shoes, and think about: Are you providing a quality party that you would want to go to? And if you wouldn't want to go to it, and you wouldn't want to buy anything, and you wouldn't want to be a part of it, then why would you think anybody else would want to? Okay. So you got to think about it that way. So party styles: You have your traditional home parties. Home parties are the number one income producing type of party you can have, okay? Now, I know with COVID being a thing right now and um, everybody's not comfortable being around a lot of people, everybody's not comfortable having people in your house, that, type, that particular type of party style is probably on the back burner for a lot of us. I'm not doing home parties right now personally, um, and I probably wouldn't go to a home party right now personally. Now, that's just me though. That's just me. If you're comfortable with home parties, they are more income producing than any other type of party because you're there, you're live, you're in person, you can play games, people can see stuff, smell stuff, touch stuff. They get to meet you, you get to meet them, you can talk about your family, you can talk about their family, and it's just more a lot more personal. Um, but right now, while that's not an option, we have to look at other party styles. But that is one that is the most income producing. Um, another one is like an open house where you invite people over to your house, okay? So, uh, a traditional home party would be where you would go to that host house, and then like an open house will be where people come to your house. But again, you know, most people are not doing that right now, but those two types of party styles are the most income producing out of any party style, okay? I'm just throwing that out there. Um... Then you have your bag or basket parties. So both of those just consist of you putting together just a little 
a sample of, of things. <laughs> and you can decide what those things are, depending on what kind of things you have in stock. It doesn't have to be anything big and fancy. It, de it does need to look professional. Um, it doesn't need to look tacky or, you know, be... Um, a turn off like you wouldn't want to hand somebody a basket of stuff where you know you got product dripping all down the side of it it's just kind of threw in there together your testers look all nasty it does need to look professional but what i mean by it doesn't have to be fancy is that you don't have to go out and buy all these big expensive things it doesn't have to be a name brand some kind of Vera Wayne bag <laughs> it doesn't have to be that i mean it can be very simple and i'm going to show you some um examples of that tomorrow but basically all you would do is pack a bag or a basket put some testers in there a few catalogs maybe order forms or qr codes i prefer to do qr codes because they can just scan that and it goes straight to that party link um that way the host doesn't have to fool with order forms and neither do you it's just easier um and then you let that host take it for like a week and let them try to um try to uh, let people smell the stuff and play with the stuff and, and sell the products um so that's a party style as well. And again, I'm going to talk about this a little more tomorrow. And then, of course, you have your Facebook events where you would create a group, a private group. Um, and you would have your host invite people over um, to your um, to your group. And then you would do your thing within that group, okay? Um, and then the last one is a shopping link, which you could just, which is, which is very simple. Um, I actually give a lot of people in my customer base, they don't really want to have a party per se, but they do like having a shopping link that they personally shop on. I leave it open for 90 days and then I close it out um, when it's time to close it out and they get the host rewards from it. Um, so that's an option as well. So I'm going to talk about those party styles. I'm going to actually have my computer and I'm going to have a couple of back, you know, a couple of party setups tomorrow so that you can actually see that stuff. And um, we'll talk about it a little more tomorrow. But um, but basically for tonight, I just want you to, to think about um, how you have presented parties. Were you excited about it? Are you sharing the rewards? Are you sharing it enough? Are you... Um, are you giving people the opportunity to see the things that you get free and half price? All those things, okay? So make it make it sound fun, make it sound attractive. Talk about it more if you're not talking about it. Um, work your list. That's the reason why we created that Frank list. You're gonna start with the people that are already associated with you and think to that already know you're a consultant. And then on the other side of that list where you have your acquaintances and maybe people who don't know you're a consultant yet, you're just going to start building relationships with those people. You are not going to ask them to host a party right now. Hear me when I say that. It is not okay to ask somebody who is not already connected to you to host a face to host a um party for you that is not okay that is not cool please do not do that don't be that person okay build a relationship first and once that relationship builds and you're learning that person and they're learning you and they're starting to know like and trust you then you present party options and stuff like that but don't ever just ask somebody to host a party for you and you're not even connected to that person that's not cool okay that's not cool um a couple of other things I wanted to share with you that I do sometimes to help me book parties is I will um, do a game. I'll offer a game. I'll show you this again tomorrow, but I like to do deal or no deal with my customers sometimes. So what I'll do is I'll take like four or five, maybe six bags of stuff and I'll write numbers on those bags. And then I'll post a picture of, usually I like to be in my pictures because it's more personal. So usually it'll be me holding the bag and then they don't know what's on the inside of it. And I'll have numbers on the outside of the bag and I'll just post pictures of me holding these bags and I'll say something like who wants to play deal or no deal and if um I'll say who wants to play deal or no deal and then I'll say if you want to play pick a number one through six or whatever and so they'll start commenting you know whatever their number is then I private message them I do not do it on Facebook I private message them and I'll say hey whoever it was hey Kelly thank you for playing deal or no deal Here's your, here's your deal. If you book a party with me for the month of January, then I'm going to give you what's inside the bag, deal or no deal. And then I will open the bag on video, like I'll do it on video. Now, if you want to, you can just snap a picture of what's on the inside of the bag and send it to them. But I'm dramatic and I like to be fun. I like for it to be fun. And so I'll like open the bag in slow motion and I'll show them what's in there. And, you know, then they can decide deal or no deal. If they say deal, party booked. I mean, it's that simple and it's fun. It's different and it gives them the opportunity to actually see what they're going to get free if they, if they host with me. Okay. Um, so that's an option. Um, 
You can also do um, theme parties. Now, again, if you are not a person to get in front of the camera, if you're not a social media, you know, kind of guru, really, um, really a social butterfly to um, do the videos and all kind of stuff, then theme parties might not be your thing. But if you're pretty camera friendly and you're okay with being live and you're okay with doing stuff live, theme parties are fun. I did a Grinch party for Christmas and it was very income producing for me and I had a blast. Um, I'm getting ready to do a Wizard of Oz party for a host that begins on Monday. Um, so that's going to be very fun. I'm really excited about that party. Um, I've done a 90s throwback party before, but it's just fun. It's different. Um, and you just co incorporate whatever that theme is into your party. So those are fun and um, gives people some different options for parties. Um, trivia nights are fun. Bingo parties are fun. And um, a lot of these different types of party styles are on YouTube, y'all. So if you want to know how to do a bingo party or how to do a trivia night party, you can go to YouTube and it'll show you all that stuff. I am going to show you a few things tomorrow, but... YouTube is full of different types of party styles, so you can get some information from there. Fundraisers are also a type of party, so they're very income producing as well. So be on the lookout when you're on social media. Be on the lookout and look for people um, who may be looking for fundraisers. Um, and then, of course, you can just host one. You know, you can contact your local animal shelter or children's hospital or, you know, any of those things and and offer a fundraiser so those are very income producing as well and of course they do link you to a different group of people um another one that i'm going to be doing in uh february is i'm going to have a spa night and what i'm going to do for the spa night is i'm going to buy a bag or two just depending on how many people respond whenever i post this i'm going to buy a bag of two or two of Cincy Soak, I'm probably going to buy a body wash and probably a either body cream or hand cream. And I'm going to sample all those things out. And then depending on how many people are going to come to my party, I'm going to send them a little spa bundle. And it's going to have a sample, of, a sample of Cincy Soak, body wash, and probably a hand cream or a, a body cream. It's like a spa experience. I'll probably throw some other things in there to make it really like a spa type experience. And then I'm going to do a Facebook Live party with them. And it's going to be like a spa type um, spa type party. And I'm going to do it around Valentine's Day. I don't want to do it on Valentine's Day just because everybody's going to be busy. <laughs> but um, I'm going to do it around Valentine's Day. But just think of stuff like that. Use the holidays to your advantage. Um, and just think of, you know, fun ways to keep people interested in what you're doing. That is going to be super fun. Who would not want to be a part of like a spa day? You know what I'm saying? Um, they get to soak their feet in some Scentsy soap. They got their lotions and they got their body wash and all the things. And, um, and then they get to, you know, just kind of hang out with me for like 30 minutes. I don't, I try to keep the lives less than 30 minutes because you lose people's attention after that. So that's why I'm getting ready to end this video because it's getting long. But, um, that's going to be super fun. And so, um, I'm going to offer that to my customers probably around February. So I'm really excited about that. But yeah, so those are some ideas. So your homework for today is i know this is going to be super scary and super intimidating but i want everybody everybody in this group i want you to try to book one party one one just one okay start with your follow-ups okay the people that you need to follow up with ask them to party after you've checked on how they like their stuff okay then if you can't get it from there then go to your list and start working the people that already know you that already are connected to you and already know that you are a consultant okay and just go down the list asking people do they want some free scentsy do you want some free scentsy do you want some free scentsy okay keep going until somebody tells you yes that's how determined you have to be every single month month after month after month i don't care if you get 20 no's one person may say yes and you you keep going until you get that one yes okay so I want everybody in this group to try to book one party, okay? What I want you to do is when you have it booked, I want you to screenshot that conversation and put it in the homework comments, okay? All right, I wish you good luck. I'm going to do this assignment with you as well, and I will talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.